This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're talking about the football team's 33-10 win at Tufts. Plus, the nationally ranked cross-country teams continue to dominate, and a trio of women's golfers qualified for the NESCAC Championships this spring. That's coming up on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs> The football team got in the win column with a 33-10 victory at Tufts on Saturday. Senior quarterback Brendan Costa threw three touchdown passes to Sean Bryant, and Costa ran for a touchdown as well in the victory. Bates never trailed in the contest, holding on to a 19-10 lead in the second half before pulling away with two late touchdowns, including a scoop and score from defensive back Owen Straley to put the cherry on top of a big win. Interim head coach Ed Argas joins the Bobcast to look back on the victory. We talked two weeks ago. You said this team will bounce back. You, w- you weren't sure when it was going to happen. They played very well against Wesleyan, and then it really all came together this past Saturday against Tufts. What were your major takeaways from this victory? Relief was one of them. It was nice to finally get the win. I don't, I don't think we played close to our best game. We made a lot of mistakes on both sides of the ball, but we didn't let anything knock us out of it. And We, we kept battling, we kept battling, kept battling, and... and Bottom line was, believe it or not, we're a more talented team than they were. So that was good to see. You know, uh, I was happy happy to to uh, to see our seniors enjoy finally a, a win after after being determined to get one and, and all the hard work that they put in. Certainly, and uh, well, we'll start with Brendan Costa, who's uh, got some honors this week. Three touchdowns, plus also, how about over a hundred yards on the ground? Truly a dual threat, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's really our our. Our, our running back, you know, he's uh, with him in the backfield. It's you know he turns two back offenses into three back, and he turns one back offenses into two back offenses. So um, the dimension that he had is is great. We just have to be careful not to rely on him too much, you know, because he's going to get beat up by the end of the season. Right, and then Sean Bryant, three touchdown catches. He and Costa clearly have a great connection. Uh, what do you see from him? What makes him such a good target? Uh, just chemistry, just, you know, really just they, they, they're on the same page. They can anticipate what, what the other guy's going to do. It just, uh, you know, they've been together for a while now, so it just kind of clicks for them. And then the game was close until late. I mean, Tufts was driving with a chance to make it a one-score game. They had it inside the five-yard line, and the defense held. That was a huge possession. What can you say about what the defense was able to do when it mattered the most there? Defense bailed us out a bunch of times, no no doubt about it. Uh, and I was happy to see that. They, they really played well. You know, we've got to basically get some first downs to give them a little bit of a break, which we weren't able to do. and put the, We should have put the game away early in the second half, but we just weren't able to do that. So um, that's going to be our emphasis this week is to, is to finish stronger sooner. Spencer Adams, NESCAC Defensive Player of the Week, had another interception. Uh, just seems like he's just really, I mean, he's one of the top tacklers in the conference right now. What can you say about what he's been able to do? Our defense is playing great. Yeah. I think it's a credit to, to Coach Davis and the unit and what he's got those kids to do. We're doing it with two coaches, you know, which is a, a miracle. And, uh, right. I mean, it really is ex- extraordinary. But it kind of worked out because we moved Coach Radulski over to offense to, to help me with the O-line, which has been a big help. But what it does is it puts the linebackers and the D-line on the same page. And those front seven need to work as a unit, um, which wasn't happening before we did this. Now with just one guy in charge of both groups, it's happening. And uh, that, that's been a big plus for us. Great. So Keith Davis, obviously um, one of the assistant coaches and uh, leading the defense. I mean, what, what, is, what does he bring to the table from a coaching perspective that you've noticed? Keith brings, uh, I think, a, a good experience, having been at Wagner, and it's a place that, that I crossed and a lot of good coaches pass through Wagner. Uh, having that, that experience, dealing with those kind of kids, and then just just the, his competitiveness. I mean, he just wants to be so successful, and, um, you know, work ethic isn't even a question. You know, all, all our coaches, they, they'll, they'll do whatever they think – they need to do to get it done or whatever I ask them to do. You know, and they'll do anything for the kids. So uh, we're fortunate that way. Kind of like a perfect storm. 
Certainly. And then obviously it was a road game at Tufts, but I know a lot of Bates alums are in the area. So what was the environment like down there? That was great. Uh, I was so happy to see people. Uh, you know, I, I left the field in a cart and I felt like the King of England driving through the crowd. <laughs> and it was the reception was uh, was really heartwarming, and it was I was happy for them because they've been loyal fans for for quite a while, you know, for for decades, and just to to get a win is is something special for them, and I was glad that we were able to do it. Certainly, and then what were some other takeaways you noticed from the game? I mean, you mentioned the trying to finish sooner. Obviously, you have a tough matchup against Trendy this week, I'm sure. But um, what were your other thoughts on what you observed on Saturday? Uh, that, that we are truly a team, that there's no quitting these kids, and they really are a team. Um, and one side picks up the other side. Nobody's pointing fingers. Um, they played together. You know, that was, that was good to see, really good to see. And then thoughts on Trinity? What's it going to take to upset the Bantams there in Hartford? Well, we'll have to play a lot better. There's no doubt about that because I think they're a better team. Uh, but they're not unbeatable. You know, they're certainly a beatable team. And if we improve where we need to improve and do the things that we need to do, we'll, we'll be in it. We'll be in the game. You know, and that's all I'm asking is for us to get to that fourth quarter and have a chance to win. And, and we'll put these kids in a place to, to have a chance to at least win. All right, and our guest, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The Bates defense played a really strong game against Tufts, allowing just one touchdown and making a number of key fourth down stops. Senior linebacker Spencer Adams had a game-high 12 tackles, including seven solo stops, plus his second interception in as many weeks and two pass breakups in the victory. Adams is tied with teammate Tony Hooks for second in the conference in tackles this season. For his efforts against Tufts, Adams was named the NESCAC Defensive Player of the Week. How did you first get involved in football? You're growing up in Bedford, New Hampshire. How did you get first uh, fall in love with the sport? So it's like some of my whole family's always been playing. So I kind of was like grew into it. My grandparents, my dad, my brother, we all played together. And uh, I grew up playing in like, I want to say Pee Wee. So when I was like 10 or 12 around then. And ever since then, like I love the sport. Always played linebacker. So that definitely helped. Never switched my position. And uh, played for the Bulldogs. Great program. We had a lot of success in high school, too. Won a state championship my junior year. So that made me fall in love with the sport. Coming here, it was tough adjusting with losing a lot at the beginning. But we've definitely helped build a better culture through our coaches and my class, I'd say, especially. Being all, going through all this stuff, especially during COVID, it's made us a lot closer, which has helped this season, especially. Yeah, so when you were looking at colleges, uh, what made Bates the place for you? I was looking at a handful of NESCACs, but Bates, I like the fit where uh, a lot of the coaches that I was talking to, very personal people, and I did like being in Maine. I like the snowboard, so okay. good location for that. And it's a great college, so those are the two main reasons, I'd say. Terrific. So you're really having a breakout year right now. You and Tony Hooks are tied for second in the conference in tackles. Uh, what has really come together, at least from your personal perspective, at the linebacker position this year? I'd say we're, we're all very uh, fast athletes, so that helps. And, but the main part we were missing at the start of the season was communication. Mm -hmm. And the last couple games, especially Wesleyan and uh, Tufts, we communicated at a very high level with the help of our coaches, breaking that down in practice, having us do that. Repetition over practice, communication, it, it paid off because we're all in sync. It's hard to stop us. Certainly. You had another interception there on Saturday. Um, George Hawkins really made that play happen, though, didn't he? Young linebacker, impressive, right? Yeah, he is. Very good athlete. I got to thank him for that one because it kind of <laughs> fell right into my hands. <laughs> right place, right time. <laughs> certainly, certainly. And then, um, you know, obviously Tufts is a place where you have a lot of alums come to the game. Um, Ed Argas mentioned that, he, he, you know, he, he loved the atmosphere. What were your thoughts on the atmosphere there on Saturday? It seemed like we had more fans than Tufts, I'd say, and it was awesome. Like, just just having, like, chants in the crowd, like, it's, you're not used to that lately. And this year, I feel like that's been a huge part of the team. Even at home, we've had a great crowd. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about defensive coordinator Keith Davis and how he's impacted the program. Yeah, he's impacted it greatly, and we really wanted him back this year, and he came back. So mm -hmm. that was awesome to see. And his, uh, he really breaks down the other team's film, like, very high levels, like, He'll call it the blueprint. But when we follow the blueprint, it works. So just got to keep on doing it. You've played four games this year. 
really three of them, you know, it was down to the fourth quarter. What was it like to, you know, finish so strong there on Saturday against Tufts finally, right? It finally clicked because yeah. we could have done it during Amherst and Wesleyan. So it was it was bound to happen. We just got to finish at the end of the game. We're, we're in it pretty much all, every time. It's just it all breaks down to mistakes, penalties, and we eliminated those this weekend. This senior class, if you will, or fourth-year juniors, whatever you want to call it, a lot of guys are coming back next year. You told me you're coming back next year. What's this group like? It's a big group, isn't it? Yeah, we had probably one of the bigger – when we came in as freshmen, one of the biggest freshman classes in a while here. And us being so tight as friends, going through COVID, like we've been through a lot together, off seasons. So it's just built like a culture that we never had in the past. And I think it's something that we can hand off to the underclassmen and continue to grow off of that. But it's going to show over the next couple of years what we've done. And then for you, you know, when you first got to college, what were some of the biggest adjustments you had to make from your time in high school? I, I don't want to be negative, but probably the losing at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's definitely an adjustment, but you got to learn to overcome those type of things because in high school, probably lost like three games over like three or four years. So it was, that was probably one of the bigger adjustments. Obviously, classes too, a little hard, harder here than high school. Right, right, right. <laughs> so managing time with practice, getting school work done, office hours, you name it. But I've learned to uh, fix those problems. <laughs> yeah, so what are you studying academically here? I'm doing American Studies and DCS. It's the study of humans in general. And I like digital communicable studies, which I think it can be applied to a lot of ranges of stuff in the business field. Terrific. So um, linebacker, you mentioned you've always been a linebacker. What about the position appealed to you from day one? Physicality. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's definitely one of the parts why I play the game. And uh, I feel like it's something that... You can't get in any other sport, especially any other position on the field. You're not. You're always in contact. You can always, you can always have like an effect on the game. So, I'd say it is a lot of fun too. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Thoughts on Trendy this weekend? Obviously, a tough opponent there on the road. Yeah, we'll be a tough opponent. And uh, like I said, if we follow the blueprint, we should have success. So, we'll have to start breaking down film today or tomorrow and get ready to go. All right, Spencer Adams, NESCAC Defensive Player of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. Quarterback Brendan Costa caught regional attention with his outstanding game against Tufts. Costa was awarded the College Division Gold Helmet Award by the New England Football Writers for the top performance by a New England Division II or Division III football player this week. He accounted for 367 yards of total offense and four total touchdowns. Costa is our male Bobcat of the Week. And he is joined on this week's Bobcast by Sean Bryant, who caught all three touchdown passes and ranked second in the conference in touchdown catches so far this season. Brendan, I'm going to start with you. You, you, We've talked before about how you really have made an effort to build chemistry with your receivers, and Sean obviously has been one of those receivers. How have you been working with him to build this chemistry that allows for all this success? I mean, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, two years ago, uh, Sean got hurt, and then when he came back, something happened. I mean, I was just finding him in any way possible. Uh, he runs crisp routes. He's a big guy. You really just can't guard him one-on-one. So I started taking the one-on-one matchups. Then he got his first touchdown against Bowden. And then we played Hamilton, and we got a little bit of a little bit of a hole. And I just started looking at him. Uh, he had, ended up getting three there, and now he's got five this year. So he's got nine touchdown catches in the past six games for us. And, and, and I feel like that's pretty legit. So whenever I get in trouble, people know that I'm, that I'm looking for 81. And really, they just can't stop it. And, Sean, how's it gone from your perspective building chemistry with Brendan like this? It's good. I mean, he's been here. He's been the quarterback at Bates for so long now. I mean, it's just, it's like, I feel like he has just such a good feel for what we need to do to get wins. And now that we have a great line in front of us, too, like, we're able to actually get that, and he knows what he's he's doing. So it's it's been awesome. I was going to say on the spectacular touchdown there in the corner of the end zone, I saw a big block that allowed you to get that pass off, right? Yeah, yeah. The line's been unreal this year. I mean, when I'm rolling to my left and, like, I had some guys in my face, but they always always are really good uh, this year of uh, picking up the blitz. And uh, and when I and as I'm seeing the coverage and I'm seeing where Sean's lined up and if we're in the red zone, I mean he's probably the, in my opinion he's probably the best red zone target in the conference. And why wouldn't I take advantage of that uh, whenever I can? And especially in the on the money downs for third and fourth down when when we need a big play, uh, I'm gonna look for Sean. Uh, and I'm I'm not always looking for Sean, but when I when, when I can get him the ball, I'm gonna I'm gonna get him the ball. 
Yeah, uh, Sean, I, I feel like, I mean, in person, you, you don't seem that tall, but on the field, it seems like you're pretty tall out there. How do you make yourself bigger almost? I don't know. I feel like I have long arms. <laughs> I feel like that's part of it. Like, we got some guys that are, like, as tall as me. I feel like long arms, <laughs> strong hands. I don't know. That's sort of what I've worked on, just getting as strong, fast, and, like, sort of working on speed, strength, and all three phases. That's kind of the biggest thing. The blitz pickup, he was telling me, like, Cole had a great block. Like, number nine on Tufts is one of the better players in the conference. And he just smacked them. That was a great play. But it was nice to get that win this weekend. So obviously you had three touchdown catches, but take us through that second one, the one that you made a uh, one-on-one play on, basically. We actually had – we tried it earlier, and it didn't work. So when I went back to it, I was like, we got to complete this. Like, we got to get this get, – get some points on the board and get ahead of them. And I thought we had such a strong opening to the game this weekend, which was a huge key to why we won. And then, Brendan, obviously, a lot of alums were there, I'm sure. What was the environment like? Oh, my God, it was unreal. You have guys that were in my class who decided to graduate coming back, a lot of my friends that we saw before the game, in the middle of the game, like walking back to the locker room. It just gets you really excited that you have a lot of alumni behind you and you have a lot of current students behind you that made the trip down to Tufts because uh, they kind of know that it's different this year. I mean, we're not getting blown out in games like, like how it used to be in the past. You know, when I was a freshman, sophomore here, we were just praying to score points. So being able to put points on the board and our defense played unbelievable, man. They, they built us out a ton on Saturday, and it kind of just allowed us to play our, play our offense. And having those alumni there, just, it just made it more exciting. When well, you're not on the field and you see that defense, I mean, Spencer Adams was a conference player of the week. George Hawkins was making plays out there. What do you see from this defense? Uh, defense, is, is, they're really just unbelievable. And, and I've, I've noticed that in practice. Like, going against them is different this year. I've I got to be more on, on top of my game, and that creates kind of competition in practice. And it obviously, iron sharpens iron, so it just makes it for a better team. Uh, but our, our defense is doing an unbelievable job. Coach Davis is an unbelievable defensive coordinator. Uh, and we, we all knew that, and we all, we all trust them to follow the blueprint, and that's what our guys did this week, and we came out with a W. So. I was going to say, you guys were up nine late in the fourth quarter and decided we're throwing for the end zone. How was that, Sean? <laughs> yeah, that was, I feel like, the icing on the cake. Yeah. It's sort of a weird situation there because you got to either run the ball, run the clock out, or you kind of just got to take a knee, and then they get one more shot. So yeah. we just figured, you know what, let's just end it up. You know, I mean, let's just take a shot yeah. here. Patrick Mahomes says this all the time, like, screw it. Tyree kills down there sometimes. <laughs> He's, so sometimes I'm fourth down and I got a guy in my face. I'm like, screw it. Sean, Sean's down there somewhere. So I, just, <laughs> so I just throw it and he ends up coming down with it. And a lot of these plays afterwards, I, I just I just look at Sean and, and we have a great friendship and and, oh, and, yeah. and, and, uh, and a great chemistry. And I'm just like, thank you, man. Like, thanks for making that play for me because <laughs> he builds me out of spots that sometimes I can't get out of. So it's a it's a great duo. And for you, not only did you have three touchdown passes, you also ran for over 100 yards and a touchdown. What was opening up for you running the ball? Well, they played a lot of man coverage, and a lot of, a lot, a lot of times in man coverage, you kind of drop the quarterback, and you can't drop me. So, <laughs> yeah. And I take that personally, honestly. And, I mean, it, 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 it just opens up the run game, which opens up the pass game, which yeah. allows our athletes on the outside, and even Caleb Bolden. Like, he, like he's, he's run the ball, but he is a – animal in the pass game like it opens up so many lanes because they're focused in on me running the ball that allows Caleb to get into space and make plays um, it kind of just opens up our whole offense once our running game gets going which happened on Saturday and we had been struggling with that all all season trying to get that run game going just to open up our pass game and Sean what do you see from this guy running the ball yeah I mean I just to make a pretty clear I mean at one point during the game I heard one of their safeties go man this guy's a problem <laughs> I think it was probably after that yeah. like long touchdown run you had and it was just like oh come on like we gotta stop this guy and it's just like honestly it just creates such a mismatch because if you're out there they like he said they play him on a lot of man coverage so they're drop back so if you if he can find his way through the D line like they're drop eight like they're yeah. not or whatever seven like you can't stop it he's too fast for that so yeah, I noticed on your touchdown and run, there was really no one near you until about the 10-yard line, and then you put a little uh, juke on him. Yeah, <laughs> Take I mean, I, I kind of was just running down the left sideline. I see this big linebacker who's giving me problems all game. Really, really respect to the Tufts front seven because they played us really well. But I, I figured, like, if I could just stop, pull up a little bit, and then Chris Capo laid one of the best blocks I've ever seen. He got a little blown up, but he he made the block, and it worked. And I and I was talking to him after. I was like, how would you even get down there? Because he, was, he wasn't feeling well before the game. Like, he wasn't feeling well throughout the whole game, really. And he just gave his all, like, trying to block a big linebacker at, at his size. Like, I, I really give it to Capo on that run, because without him, I, I was not getting into the end zone at all. Excellent. And then um, this week, obviously, Trinity, a tough opponent, certainly on the road. What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, of course. I mean, they're a good opponent. I mean, I know Bates – historically hasn't beaten them in a long time, but that's not really what we're worried about. We're worried about like how can we play our best 
get the best game plan going and then give us give us a good shot. I mean, I know in my head I'm thinking we're winning this game, but just we gotta we gotta bring our best for four quarters. So yeah, I mean, obviously Trinity in recent years it's been a struggle, but I mean, there's a ton of experience on this team, right? Yeah, I mean now now we're older and now we know how to kind of put games together. We're we're, we're finally starting to put together four quarters. Um, and obviously Trinity is a huge test for anybody in this conference. But uh, the way that we've played this year, I think we could play with anybody in the conference as long as we just stay to our assignments and just do our job. And that's what we've been preaching a lot in practice and in games. Just do your 111th. And it's kind of uh, it's kind of uncanny because most of us are Patriots fans. So just do your job, yeah. and it, and and it works. <laughs> it works. So, <laughs> coach. So coach Belichick knows what he's talking about. So just 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 do yeah, your one eleventh and get it done, yeah. and good things will happen. Sean, when you have someone like Brendan who can run the ball like he does as a receiver, when you're running your route out there, what are you looking for from him? Because you know he could scramble anytime. You got to be ready to improvise, right? Yeah, that improvisation. That's a big one. We call it scramble drill. Yeah. Like you gotta. I mean, depending on where you're lined up, you wanna. If he's headed to the right sideline and you're coming to the left you want to focus on levels and getting to a different level so you have a receiver at each level and then getting to the sideline working to them so that way because I mean we're always aware like most quarterbacks are just in the pocket you're on your route and then the play's kind of over but Brendan you got to be like in your mind ready to get open and it's honestly just like backyard football like at the end of a play if it breaks down it's like backyard football and you got to be ready to improvise so yeah that's got to be a little stressful for the coaches but fun for the players right yeah I mean some <laughs> sometimes they sometimes they get a little mad when I'm running around back there but if I make a play they don't say anything so <laughs> as long as long as we make the play they're not going to say anything and obviously if I'm running around our, our, our receivers are great just trying to find those open holes in the defense and Obviously, when the whole defense breaks down and when the offense breaks down and we're just trying to make a play, I think we're one of the better teams in the conference at kind of doing that just with, uh, with the way that I can kind of move in, in the back and then with the guys downfield moving up the field and down the field, finding those open holes. Like it's, it's, such, a, it's such an untalked about aspect of an offense of being able to do the scramble joke because that, it could be an easy 50-yard chunk right there. Uh, going going down the field, so scramble drill is something that that we definitely practice a lot. Then Sean, in terms of this program, I was talking with Spencer Adams. He mentioned that he's coming back next year. You mentioned last week you're coming back next year. A lot of guys who are class of 22 in quotes are coming back for an extra season, like Brendan, yeah. like and Anthony did. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, I mean, right now we have eight or nine guys coming back, and our goal is to convince as many as we yeah. can. I mean, I was glad when Brendan and Anthony came back because they're such key, good keys to our team, and they've been such like good leaders for us too. But honestly, like I think the more wins we have, the more these guys will be like, wait, I've been doing this my whole life. I don't want it to end. And that's the biggest thing with it. Um, I know it's a lot to ask for some guys who have jobs in the line and who are waiting to go graduate. But I mean, it's four months of your life. Like you'll remember this for the rest of your life. So that's why, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, and what would you say to the guys who are considering this like you did? I mean, you're never going to forget it. I yeah. mean, I, I, there's, there's no regret in my mind that I was trying to get some of my guys in my class. but. All, all, all just respect to them for doing what they need to do. But I mean, I'm never going to regret this decision. It's, it's memories that we're making on this field. Like you only get to play football one time in your life. You can't go pick up the pads and put them on when you're 50 years old. It's just, it's just, it's just not going to work out. It's, it's one of the only sports where you can only play while you're in your physical prime just because it's such a physically demanding sport. So it, it was really no, no, uh, no uh, question for me about coming back. Great. Well, any other thoughts you want to share, Sean, about the game on Saturday? Honestly, just happy to get a win. Hopefully we'll be um, giving you guys a good show for next week. Absolutely love getting a win in October. Uh, it, it really hasn't happened here in a long time. Usually we have to wait till the end of the season. But uh, I feel like I feel like the conference and uh, teams in New England are really taking notice on what on on what we're doing. We, we we've had a couple of tough losses, but in those losses we've really dominated in, in some of the aspects of the game. So uh, I think teams are really taking notice to what to what we've been doing and what and what we will continue to do throughout the season. All right, Brendan Costa, Sean Bryan, thanks so much. Thanks, Aaron. Thank Appreciate you. it. The nationally ranked cross-country teams compete at the Running Monks Invitational on Saturday, hosted by St. Joseph's College. Both teams finished in first place in a meet where they gave some of the younger Bobcats a chance to shine. Sophomore Isabel May took full advantage of her opportunity on the women's team, finishing second out of 60 runners to lead the Bobcats with a time of 24 minutes, 58.6 seconds. And Isabel May is our female Bobcat of the week. I was actually probably the least athletic kid ever, and I tried so many sports, and I hated all of them, and my parents put me in everything, and I did not want to stick with it. And then when I started middle school, my dad thought that I might like cross country because I could do it by myself, and I didn't have to, like, kick a ball or anything. Like, there was very little athleticism involved, so... I started cross country in seventh grade, and it's been three seasons of running every year since then. Great. And then uh, did you like it right away? Did it, was there an adjustment period? or? 
Um, I showed up to practice on the first day and our coach said we were running four miles and I was like, ah, <laughs> so definitely it, it took a little bit of an adjustment, but I really liked being able to challenge myself. And like, after I got over the shock factor of like, oh my God, I actually have to run. Um, I loved it. Excellent. And then, um, what made you decide you wanted to come to Bates for college? My cross-country coach in high school actually went to Bowdoin, and so when I was looking at, I knew I wanted to run in college, um, and when I was looking at places that I wanted to go, she suggested, like, smaller liberal arts schools, and so I looked at a bunch of the NESCACs, um, and my coach in high school thought I might really like Bates, so it was actually the first school I visited, and I showed up on campus, and I just, like, fell in love with everything, and my hosts were awesome, and Coach Jay and Coach Art were awesome, and I just kind of knew after that this is where I wanted to be. So a Bowdoin alum recommended Bates. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> I'm going to – I hold that over her still. <laughs> Last year, obviously, a strange season. You did get some outdoor track in in the spring, mm-hmm. but what was it like for you, like, COVID college, if you will, your first year? <laughs> Oh, it was so weird, and I'm honestly kind of grateful for it because I didn't know what I was missing. Like, I think it would have been so much worse if I had had a normal year and then, or a normal two years, and then had to come back for last year and then have to try to adjust to that. Um, it was a really good year. I think it was nice to kind of get in a little more training and like kind of mature as an athlete a little bit more um, without having to worry about racing. So that was nice, but definitely I'm really glad to be having races now and being able to compete at a level that's much higher than we were at last year so it's been really exciting and I've been having a lot of fun this year and obviously you got some outdoor track in as I mentioned um you mentioned obviously you know during cross country and you did you realize right away as a kid you also wanted to run track it's it's a natural fit right yeah definitely I mean the expectation in a lot of programs I think and this was middle school so there wasn't really any expectation (laughs) um but you kind of do like cross country and indoor track and outdoor track and I really by the end of my like seventh grade cross country season I just really loved it and I wanted to keep running um so I did indoor track outdoor track what are the track events you like most I raced the 5K last year for the first time, and that was the only thing I raced. I'm super excited for indoor because I love running the 3K indoors. It's my favorite thing ever. It's so much fun. Um, but, yeah, I kind of really like that 3K, 5K range. Great. Tell us about the race this past weekend. It sounds like it went r- really well. Yeah, definitely. So this was kind of a race that a coach put a lot of the a lot of us into to kind of, like, get more racing experience, have, like, a super fun, low-key meet, and it was really, really fun. We kind of went into it with the plan to all pack up and run together, which is which was awesome, and we executed that really well. We had, like, I think seven of the top ten in the race were all Bates, which was super cool, um, and, yeah, we just went out and ran together. It was my first ever 6K, mm. um, which was super fun. I really liked it. It was the first 6K for... I think most of the people who were running in the race. Um, but yeah, we everybody ran a great race. It was super fun to go out and work together and put up a really strong showing. This team in general, obviously, it's true for both the women and the men, really deep, right? Yeah, I think that's one of our greatest strengths, and that's something that we talk about all the time when we're talking about racing strategy, is just the fact that we're we have such deep teams and we're because of that we're really able to work together really well um and succeed a lot in racing and succeed as a team as well as individuals what was this course like at st joe's because obviously you're used to training at pineland which is a very difficult course Mm -hmm. Uh, what about this one i was actually surprised by how difficult it was Mm -hmm. we did the course walk and all of the hills looked really small compared to pineland um and they definitely were smaller compared than Pineland, but there were a lot of them. Um, and so it was definitely a more challenging course than I was expecting, but it was really fun to run. It felt like a real, it was a, in the woods a bunch and a lot of different terrain. So it felt like a real, like gritty cross country meet, I guess. So I always love this. And for you, obviously getting a chance to basically run at the front of the pack, essentially you got second overall. What was that experience like for you? It was very different from the other races that we've been running um, because this was a lot smaller, but it was really, I liked it a lot, especially because for most of the race, we were all running together in a pack. And like, I think that just helps everybody's mental state during the race um, so much. And like for us to all be there in the front running so well was, I think, a real confidence booster for everyone on the team as we kind of go into championship season and bigger meets. Terrific. What are your thoughts you wanted to share about the team so far this year we haven't got to talk about yet? Um, 
not really that we haven't talked about yet. I mean, I can't say enough about how like grateful I am for them and how much I love them and like how, what an awesome year we've been having. It's been really great and I'm so happy to be a part of the team. Great. Isabel May, Female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. On the men's side, first year Andrew Motter led Bates by taking second place overall, covering the eight kilometer course in 28 minutes, 10 seconds. One second ahead of teammate Daniel McConnell. Motter joins the Bobcast to talk about how he got into cross country and his goals for the remainder of the school year. I've been running since I was like eight years old. Um, I actually looked back the other day at my dad's Facebook um, and there's pictures of me running 5Ks at the age of like eight years old. Um, I kind of started getting serious. Um, I went to one Junior Olympics, which if anybody knows running, that's kind of the that's the peak of, of uh, you know, kids running. And then I was like, whoa, I need to join a team. So I, I started up a team with a coach that worked at uh, the middle school and then, you know, worked on that team, ran in middle school, ran in high school, um, and I haven't stopped since. So you, in middle school, took the initiative to actually help start a team. What was that process like? Well, so it was me and uh, two other kids that were from, I'm, I live in a small town in Rhode Island, and basically um, this this coach at the middle school, he said, he offered, he said, hey, we can we can start something, like, we just need a little funding, but we can we can put a logo together, like, we can, we can get something going, and um, it was, I mean, I was so young that I don't really remember it, but, um, like, now I know the team has over 150 kids, um, I don't, I talk to the coaches, not often, but um, it's crazy to see how much it's grown and like how it's all started with me and these two other kids. Great. And then you went to high school in Massachusetts, right? Mm -hmm. Tabor Academy. Tell me about that experience running there. Yeah. So uh, freshman year, I mean, I wasn't really, I knew I was going to run cross country. It was something um, I definitely wanted to do in high school, but um, I got really lucky to be on a really, really great team. um, And I ended up being the last spot on our varsity team freshman year, which is huge. Um, and actually my sophomore year, we ended up, um, we're in something called the ISL, which is the independent school league. Mm-hmm. Um, and we ended up winning that league my sophomore year. And that was one of the coolest experiences of my life. And it was really, really inspiring to have some, like we had some ridiculously good runners on that team and just to be, you know, part of a team that was doing well. And I was actually a scoring member of that team was was really really cool and I enjoyed winning awesome and then when did you decide that Bates was gonna be the place for you for college well I mean I I looked obviously I looked at a lot of the the NESCACs and then I mean I actually did look at a couple schools down south but I ended up um, coming between Bates and a couple other schools and um, the package was right that Bates was offering me and also just even like on the second visit back it just felt really comfortable walking around this campus um Everybody I met was really, really nice, and that hasn't stopped. Everybody you meet is ridiculously kind here. Um, and I think it just it just felt um, more right than any other place when you're walking around. Had you been to Maine before? Or? Yeah, so, I mean, I came up uh, with my dad my sophomore year, into my sophomore year, and we looked at Bates Boat and Colby, and I think I'd probably been up here one time before, but not really, and it's honestly surprising me every every day we will go out on runs to a different place or we'll go travel somewhere to run and it is you drive 15 minutes anywhere and you run into something beautiful it is truly amazing um and yesterday like I went and played golf um, with one of my buddies and like just the difference in like having the the leaves change up here it's it's I mean I'm from New England but it's a different it's a different level up here and it's beautiful and I love it Excellent. So let's talk about the race this past weekend. You got second there. The team got first at the Running Monks Invitational. Uh, how'd it go from your perspective? Yeah, no, that was that was really exciting. Um, I mean, obviously, we didn't have our top 14 guys because um, we were saving them. There's a race this upcoming weekend at Connecticut College. Um, and so we were saving them. So this was a big opportunity for me to, you know, front run for a race. And that was really exciting. I, coach put me out. Um, in the top group um and something he'll do before races and he'll give he'll give us our what he wants our splits to be for each mile Mm. um and yeah i mean i I executed it 
like I think I was within one second on every single split so that was really fun um, I think I, we got us separated a little bit um, in terms of our our you know second base runner but I, I stayed strong it was it was a interesting course uh, very tight a lot of turns um, which isn't necessarily great for running but um, made it exciting and then right at the end actually my teammate Dan tried to pass me <laughs> and then I had to kick it into high gear and I ended up beating them but it was a lot of fun it was a great team win I think we had seven in the top ten something crazy like that so it was really good well, you mentioned being on such a competitive team in high school, and well, that doesn't change here in college, right? I mean, you mentioned Bates, obviously, uh, the men's team, very deep, right? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. You, I came here, and, I mean, I, I was used to last year. I was, I was the top guy on my high school team, and I really had to do a lot of my own training, had to do a lot of my own racing because there was nobody to run with me, and then you come here, and it's not – I honestly wasn't – I don't want to say humbled, but you just – you step into a – a culture of the team that just wants everybody wants it everybody's working so hard um and it just motivates you I mean like I I can feel myself getting better every week um and that comes down to me putting in the work but also just being around a group of guys um that are just at that upper tier um and just you know seeing the progress that just hard work can 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 give you and it's it's really really inspiring and it's a great group of guys and it's sick what have you learned from uh, our head coach, Curtis Johnson? I've learned, you know, it, consistency will pay off. Um, and I think just showing up every week, putting in the work. I mean, we do team lifts twice a week. Um, and those have been huge, like opening my mobility um, and becoming, you know, more flexible runners, huge. And that's something he emphasizes. Um, but I think, yeah, he's been, he's been a great leader and a great mentor, just, you know, sticking to the plan and, um, knowing that like if I do the right things things will pay off and it's really good something I've often talked with cross-country runners a lot about is you run so far in your training sessions that the actual races Mm. are almost a piece of cake right yeah (laughs) yeah and coach will joke sometimes that um we'll go to Pineland which is uh like 30 minutes away and that's um we'll do our workouts there and he'll joke that like our Pineland workouts that the way we'll end and how we'll feel at the end of that it should feel far worse and far harder than any race will ever run um and that's honestly a good thing I think we put ourselves in the position um every week you know there's I mean I'm on the low end of this team for mileage and I'm running 50 to 55 miles a week but there's kids on our team that are running upwards of 78 and 80 miles it's Mm -hmm. ridiculous but it's all about just conditioning your legs to just not stop conditioning your your breathing to not stop and I think it's it's all just you know it's I I think one of the reasons cross country becomes addictive is it is such a um you know reap the rewards type of sport like you if you put in the work if you are coming in every week and and dedicating yourself you will get faster there's no you know if and or but so it's really good Awesome. And then are you going to be on the track and field team as well? Yeah. So I actually in high school, I didn't, um, I played baseball in the nice. spring, so I haven't run track and field. I did the same thing in middle school, actually. I haven't run track and field since I was like 10. Mm. Um, but I'm, that's honestly been something I'm really, really looking forward to is, you know, it's a whole, it, it's, it's still running, but it's a different type of sport. You're, people say you got to get your, you know, it's a, it's a different kick. It's a different everything. So I think I'm going to be running mid-distance, which is like the 800 and probably the mile. Um, but I'm excited to be running year-round, and I know, you know, that's going to get me, you know, staying in shape all year is going to be huge. Um, and it's just going to mean, like, the future, I'm just going to get continue to get fast, and it's it's really exciting. Terrific. Well, any other thoughts you wanted to share about the past weekend or your time on the team so far we haven't got to talk about yet? Yeah, I mean, it, not really. I mean, I've, I've really said everything. I'm, I'm really excited to... Uh, that race actually the the top four um in that race is hypothetically going now to con okay, nice. uh, which is really exciting so i think i'm going to be um along with a couple other of my teammates from the st joe's race will be joining the rest of the guys and i think we're staying in a hotel this friday um and then racing on saturday so that's really exciting um and honestly five weeks ago i, I didn't think i was even going to be in that discussion for that race um so to know that 
you know, I, I've surprised myself and I've made that much progress. It's, it's really, really exciting. Awesome. Andrew Motter, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. The women's golf team competed at the NESCAC Fall Qualifier over the weekend at Nunsuch River Golf Course, where the top four teams qualified for the NESCAC Championships this spring. The Bobcats finished in fifth place, but three individuals qualified for the spring championships thanks to their terrific performances. First year, Maddie Quay fired a 72 on Sunday, the low round of the tournament for Bates, finishing in a tie for sixth place out of 41 individuals with a two-day score of 146. Sophomore Alex Voigt Shelley shot a 73 on Saturday and a 75 on Sunday, good for a tie for eighth place. And first-year Nerea Barranco Amburu recorded back-to-back -back scores of 77, finishing 18th in the field. Well, we got a trio of women's golfers who qualified for the NESCAC Championships over the weekend. Maddie Quay, Alex Void Shelley, and Nerea Barranco Amburu here as well. Nerea, let's start with you. First year, give me a little idea. You're from Spain. How did you end up coming to Bates for college? So I went to play golf in college, so I chose Bates because it would give me the opportunity to play golf here. Um, well, I'm really liking it. I really like it, and it's. I think that it's a great opportunity to show, like, what I'm capable to do here. When yeah. did you start playing golf growing up? Um, so I started when I was seven, kind of, um, and I didn't take it seriously until like four years ago, and now I don't play it. Yeah, I really like it. And so, did you go to high school in Spain, or? Yeah, I used to go to high school, but in Spain you don't play golf for your high school. Mm -hmm. It's separate, so it's harder to get engaged with golf, but since I really like it, I just continue to play it, yeah. And you mentioned uh, Bates gave you the opportunity to play here. How do you first discover Bates as a place you can go? Well, Google it, yeah, <laughs> yes. Google, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's basically what I did, yeah. I see the pictures, I like it, and I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We'll talk a little bit about the tournament this past weekend. Alex, you competed in the NESCAC Championships last spring. This was kind of your first fall qualifier. What was it like maybe compared to last spring? I was a little more nervous going into this one because last year we didn't have to qualify at all so we just like played the actual tournament and it was COVID so it was sort of low, low stakes. Um, this one they only took four individuals um, and only four teams so it, it was a lot harder um, to qualify for it um, but I knew if we just went out there played the, our best um, that we could which we definitely did um, we would able we would be able to at least qualify some individuals so I'm just really proud of us it was really fun. Great. And Maddie, how about day two, 72 for you? What was really clicking out there at the course? Um, I really just found my rhythm. I think it's really important to me um, to when I do well to find my rhythm and to um, be strong in my mental game and focus on every shot, which was really working on the second day. And so I was just like breezing through and focusing on um, my game and finding my rhythm. Great, and then Norea, how about the Nunsuch River Golf Course? Had you played it before? What was what was the course like? Um, it was similar to what I'm used to because we have many trees and everything, so it was kind of yeah easy for yeah for me. I think so. <laughs> you hadn't played there though before. And um, we play like six holes on Friday. Okay. Yeah, but we didn't really know how the golf course was. So on Saturday it was just like okay, let's see what we have here. <laughs> Yeah. So lots of trees, you said? Yeah. Which, Maddie, I know that's something you're still getting used to, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a lot of trees, and in, be in between holes, there were these crazy walks, and it looked like the beginning of a horror movie every time. And I was like, yep, this is where we, this is where it happens. <laughs> so this is where we die. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but no, but it's beautiful. And then all the, all the leaves were all orange, which is beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> And then Alex, as a sophomore, how cool is it to see these two first years stepping up like this uh, the, in their, you know, debuts in collegiate golf? I am so proud of the both of them. I, I knew that they could get to this point when we started the season um, because, like, they, they just put in so much work. Um, and it's really nice to have a full team. So now that we have Abby and we're all um, here together practicing every day and getting better, I, I knew we could um, do play really well this weekend. So I'm really proud of these two for stepping up. Yeah, Abby Spector is a main golf legend here, and uh, Ray, what's it like having her as a coach? After meeting her, I can tell that she's amazing, and she's always there to help us. She's helping me with my like mental game because I have to work on that, and uh, yeah, so she's really good at it. Yeah. Maddie, obviously, all three of you qualified for the NESCAC championships this spring. What do you think the process is going to be like over the winter and stuff to get ready for this one tournament, basically coming up in like April? 
Um, I, we're definitely going to make use of the sim room during the winter when it snows. Um, right now we still have pra we still can practice until October 31st, so we'll still be going out there. And I know that we'll definitely be working out and getting stronger for the spring season when it does not snow as much. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then Alex, after day one. You were, the team as a whole was pretty close to fourth. What was that like to be in it? That was incredible. I mean, I Williams is only beating us by two, and they're one of the best teams in the NESCAC after doing um, So, I, like, that that feeling that, that we're, like, really, really good, like, we've gotten so much better, and that we can be one of one of those top four teams um, in the near future is, is such a good feeling. Um, and I was just really excited because I knew, like, I played really well day one, and... Um, so did Maddie and Araya, and I think I, I knew that if we went out there and did the same thing um, the next day, that we would have a, a pretty uh, good chance of uh, uh, you know staying in fifth and maybe maybe possibly qualifying. But uh, next year, I, I think we've got a really really good shot at it, so I'm excited for it. Great. And then Nerea, what's it like being on this team? What's your experience been like? You know, adjusting to college golf with with these women as your teammates. So I used to play more individual golf back in Spain, um, but I really like being part of a team because you get a lot of sport and you have really good time with them. Yeah, and I have a lot of fun. Yes. It does seem like the team's having a lot of fun, Maddie. <laughs> yeah, um, we're all really supportive of each other, and we know that we all have goals that you know we all like me. And then this weekend we all met our goals, which was amazing. Um, we all did really great this weekend. We peaked, which is at the right yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, shooting in the 70s, that's what it's all about, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, a lot of the, like, the best best teams all shoot in the 70s, and um, that, like, all of our, I think all of three of ours, our goal was to shoot 70s this weekend, and, and we did, so I'm, I'm just really proud of, of all of us and how hard we worked for it. Terrific. Let's go around and get any final thoughts you want to share about the season so far and, and this team in general we haven't got to talk about, Maria? So it's sad that we can't play in winter because I'm used to play the whole year, okay, right. but <laughs> we'll get used to it, yes. And I think that the team will get stronger and stronger during winter and we'll be ready for spring, yeah. Terrific. Maddie, how about for you? Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm excited to work hard this winter and um, ready for spring. Alex, your final thoughts? Uh, I'm so excited for the spring. We've got Sylvia and Amisha both coming back. Um, go, so yeah. we're going to have more than five people on our team, <laughs> which is so great. Um, and so I'm excited to, to work hard this winter and then come back and be ready to, to compete more in the spring. So. Great. Alex, Nerea, Maddie, thanks so much for joining the Bobcast. And congrats again on qualifying for the NESCAC Championship. Thank you. Thank you. In other Bates Athletics action, men's tennis junior Liam Dunn advanced to the semifinals of the D-Flight Singles Tournament at the Wallach Invitational over the weekend. The Bobcats won five matches total at the tournament, their last of the fall. While the volleyball, field hockey, and soccer programs came up empty last week, women's soccer gave Amherst a run for its money in a 3-2 loss to the nationally ranked Mammoths. All four programs have a chance to bounce back this week, with women's soccer hosting Thomas College Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. They are also home Saturday along with men's soccer and field hockey, with Wesleyan coming to town. Go to GoBatesBobcats.com for the complete schedule, and we'll recap all the action next time on the Bates Bobcast. Bobcast.